From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Firefighters yesterday quickly controlled a blaze in the Goldstream Valley. It started shortly before 6 p.m. in a Moose Mountain subdivision and was contained within a half hour. Officials from the State Division of Forestry said the first truck that got there was able to knock down the fire before it spread. Chena Goldstream Fire and Rescue also responded to provide a mutual aid. Now hot weather has made the fire danger high across the state. The majority of Alaska is experiencing record-breaking high temperatures heading into solstice weekend. Now, here in the interior, hot temperatures also mean extreme fire danger. Statistics show the majority of wildfires are human-caused. The emergency management team with the Fairbanks North Star Borough is advising interior residents to exercise extreme caution when handling flame. Fire can spread quickly with the dry conditions in the area. Emergency management also says now is the time to prepare your home and surrounding areas and to have food and water supplies in the event of an emergency. We're starting to be very concerned about some of the fire risk indices that we're seeing. They're starting to get sky high, so we're really trying to push a message to our residents that now is this time to start getting ready for fire season and, quite frankly, getting ready in the event that folks that live in some of the more uh, rural areas that might be impacted by wall and fire are prepared to evacuate if needed. We've had two pretty near miss fires already. Again, due to the extreme weather conditions being experienced in the interior, all sales of fireworks within the North Pole city limits have been suspended. That's according to Fire Chief Buddy Lane. He said the weather forecast will be monitored daily for changes, and once there is a change in the current weather pattern and conditions improve, fireworks sales will be permitted through July 4th. The city of North Pole is encouraging people who already have fireworks to refrain from setting them off until conditions improve. The state is opening a disaster assistance center in Galena to help local victims of this spring's flooding. The center will be open for a week beginning Tuesday for individuals and families with damages or property losses to apply for state assistance programs. The center's hours will be from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., though evening appointments can be arranged. Disaster assistance centers are planned for the Anchorage and Fairbanks areas for Galena residents who remain displaced. Dates have not been announced. The deadline to apply for individual assistance is July 30th. There will be a two-part open house on sulfalane contamination in North Pole on June 25th. One will run from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and the other from 7 to 9 p.m. Both will be held at North Pole City Hall. Representatives from the Alaska Department of Environmental Conservation and Health and Social Services will be there to answer questions, listen to concerns, and also to provide the most up-to-date information. The industrial solvent was found in wells near the North Pole refinery in the fall of 2009. All residents with sulfalane detections in their water currently have been offered an alter alternate drinking water source. Genetically modified salmon will have to be labeled if a Senate spending bill passes. The language was added by Senator Lisa Murkowski during an Appropriations Committee hearing today. It passed by a one-vote margin, with Senator Mark Begich also voting in support. Alaska's congressional delegation have opposed any effort by the Food and Drug Administration that would clear the way for the approval of genetically engineered salmon for human consumption. The genetic engineering would allow the fish to grow twice as fast as normal. We're messing with what Mother Nature has done. We're messing with that food chain in a way that I don't think is either good for us from human consumption perspective or for, for what we're putting, what we're allowing in, into the waters. There are lots of hot and dry weather. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, fire danger at risk Dangerous this weekend as well. And now no with, fireworks. With the 4th of July coming up. That's crazy. But it's not like we can really see them. So. Well, that's true, but it's, it's kind of tradition more than yeah. anything else. But, true. Uh, yeah, but hopefully weather conditions will improve. we still got, what, almost two full weeks. So. Yeah, and Mike said last night we can expect some rain maybe, so that yeah, might help. Yeah, heading into this weekend maybe. Yeah. Okay. All right, when we come back, Sick Wildlife has fish and game officials warning people to keep an eye on their pets. Also, the fate of a sled dog who bit a toddler in the Matsu region is in the hands of an animal control board. Those stories are next. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Fairbanks Evening News. Five and a half years in jail for a 22-year-old Delta Junction man convicted of felony sex abuse earlier this year. As part of a plea deal reached last January, Sean Beaudre pled guilty to a single count of second-degree sexual abuse of a minor. 
Beaudre was sentenced earlier this week in state superior court. Authorities in Delta received a report of possible abuse on October 8th of 2011. State prosecutors say Beaudre sexually abused a four-year-old girl living in the same household. That's according to Alaska State Troopers. Now, a part of his sentence, Beaudre must also register as a sex offender for the rest of his life. A snowshoe hare from the Fairbanks area has tested positive for tularemia. State game officials say tularemia also affects beavers and muskrats. The bacterial disease can be spread to predators, including domestic dogs and cats. Humans can also be infected by handling these infected animals. Symptoms are very serious. It includes skin ulcers, fever, swollen lymph nodes, headaches, muscle weakness, and pneumonia. The disease can be fatal if the person is not treated with proper antibiotics. If anyone suspects the disease in a hare, they are asked to call the Alaska Department of Fish and Game at 459-7206. The fate of a sled dog husky belonging to Iditarod musher Jake Berkowitz is at an impasse as the Matsu Animal Control Board did not reach an agreement on Wednesday. Now, the dog attacked a child back in May and its offense was classified as a level 5, the most severe classification that a dog can receive under borough law. The board put the classification in mind, but also heard arguments on whether the dog was provoked. Two members were in favor of putting the dog down. Two members voted to spare its life. The board will meet again on June 24th to make a final decision on the matter. Fairbanks for the past few weeks has become the backdrop for a feature film. The film is called Mining for Ruby and it is being directed by former Fairbanks and Zoe Quist. The students at the University of Alaska Fairbanks who enrolled in the FRAME program have also gotten a unique opportunity. During filming, they have been able to work on set with Hollywood professionals and get credit for the class. One student says this is an opportunity that anyone who is interested in film should take advantage of. I would tell current and future students to be involved in as many extracurricular film opportunities if, that's, if that was their interest. And it doesn't matter how many student films they are or commercials or volunteer work or whatever it is that that's what if that's where their interest is that's what they need to pursue because all of the people that they're working with now especially if they would continue to stay in state in Alaska those will be the people they actually work with in a professional sense I suppose. We will have more on mining for Ruby and that's interior attainment tonight at 11 p.m. on New Center Final. Well, it's time for this week's edition of the Backyard Barbecue. Tonight, we're grilling something other than meat. Good afternoon. I'm Dan Gilson, the owner of the Charcoal Supply Company and the pit master of the Three Dog Barbecue Competition Cooking Team. Today, we're going to do something a little bit fun. We're going to do some. We're going to take some peppers. We're going to stuff them with some cream cheese, and then we're going to put them on that grill and we're going to cook them up real quick. Real simple recipe. Just a brick of cream cheese and about three tablespoons of. Uh, Moustard, this one is the smoked alder. They have many different uh, varieties. Most of them will work for this. All I do is I put everything into a Ziploc bag, mush it up real good, and then once I get it ready to go, I snip off a, a corner of the bag. That way I have a, a little uh, uh, bag to squeeze the, the cheese into the, the cheese mixture into the pepper. Just put a little bit into the pepper like that. I've got a couple that are already done here. Then what I do is I take a little bit of my lead dog trail dust, the original kind, but you could use the rugged. Just give it a little sprinkle right on top. Once you've got that done, you can go ahead and put them into the grill. Now I've got my grill set up in kind of a little bit of an offset. I have all the charcoal on one side and then I can put the food on the other side so that it doesn't get too hot and it won't scorch. As you can see, we've already got a few that are already done cooking. They don't take long. And there you have it. Roasted stuffed peppers done on the grill. I'm Dan Gilson. and this has been the Backyard Barbecue Series. Brought to you by the Charcoal Supply Company. Yeah, that did look I like that tune. Yeah, some stuffed peppers. Hey, yeah. I'm game. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Hungry. So, Joe, are you gearing up to go live tomorrow from the Midnight Sun basketball game? Ye baseball or, I mean, game. baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's going to be Saturday. We're going to yeah. go through the rest of the weekend sports events. You're getting ahead. But the Midnight Sun 
baseball game will be tomorrow <laughs> night. It's going to be midnight sun and everything. We're gonna, also, we have highlights from the Gold Panthers game from last night. And also, there's a sporting event where you can literally do in the middle of the night. Basketball. Basketball? No, no, no. Is no. that, I find guess. Out, I find out what's coming next. We can do basketball anytime. Cool. <laughs>